the start right now, and we're just about to get going for his hour record attempt. Um, timers are all ready. He's in the start blocks, and the start gate's about to release. So let's uh, watch Kevin as he gets going here. Kevin Metcalf is underway. His one hour attempt. Go, Kevin! Kevin's taking off. He's uh, searching for the hour record. His current hour record is 47.773 kilometers. Uh, that's held by a gentleman in New Zealand named Jim McMurray. And uh, Kevin's trying to beat that today. Uh, one of the keys with Kevin, he's been going out really strong in the beginning, so we have to kind of calm him down. He was doing, he was doing paces that were uh, 17 three lap times in practice, and so uh, we're trying to get him to, to calm that down a little bit uh, to make sure that he uh, uh, was able to hold his pace. The hour record is such a demanding effort. Uh, requires tremendous pacing and patience, uh, but also the ability to dig super deep as you get into the later stages. So Kevin is uh, settling in right now. Uh, he does a cadence of around 108 RPMs is approximately what Kevin is doing. His gearing, he's running a 52 front chainring and a 13 tooth rear cog. Uh, so if he's doing lap times anywhere under 18 seconds, 18.8 .8 seconds, uh, he should be on par to beat that 47.773 kilometers. And again, this is uh, Kevin Metcalf with uh, the world hour record for 55 to 59 age group. Um, he's trying to become the fastest old guy. Uh, <laughs> for the hour on the track. So uh, we're looking forward to seeing how Kevin does here. He's worked so hard on this. Uh, his training, his preparation has been phenomenal. His, uh, his interval workouts, everything that he's done in preparation has been just fantastic. So uh, he's looking really good right now. Kevin's been natural on this track. Uh, he's been on wood tracks before. Uh, this, this one obviously is a little different because it has banking of um, 45 degrees on the side so it's really steep when we look down and um, it requires a, a special technique when you're going around the corners to carry that momentum and as you can see kevin's actually on the black line um, so he's really holding those tight lines around the course which Chris, is the shortest one you around come over here if you're if you're talking, then people can also hear you on our broadcast over here, sure. uh, so they don't have to be doing both. So. Right, so we're looking at Kevin going around. He's essentially, uh, let's see, how far in is he right now? He's about two minutes and 45 seconds in at this point in time, and he's just kind of settling into his, his groove. The first five minutes of this effort is really all about essentially just finding the rhythm and getting the pace down, getting his heart rate to calm down, make sure that it's something that's sustainable. It's such a violent effort in the beginning with the start and everything that uh, the heart rate uh, goes up and so the important part is just settling down into his rhythm. And so he's really, uh, he's looking pretty good. He's not breathing too hard. He's really just kind of um, focused on his pace right now. and. Um, is settling into that rhythm. We'll, we'll know in a couple minutes here how he's doing for the initial pace. And again, this won't be necessarily uh, an overall uh, indicator of how he's doing because hopefully he starts out a little bit slower. We've been able to calm him down. But Kevin was listening to some hair metal uh, rock music as he was warming up and getting all amped up. So that, that's kind of how Kevin gets into his groove. 
So I have a friend, Mike Seeley from Seeley Sports Coaching, that just had uh, it's Kevin Eleven out there. Kevin, we've been teammates for years and back in the 90s. Uh, Kevin had a penchant for eating chewy sweet tarts instead of power bars and things like that and always drinking Diet Coke and so we nicknamed him Kevin Eleven uh, for that. And, uh, that's, that's kind of been his nickname. But now with our sponsor, Do Energy Lab, they've really worked with Kevin on his nutrition and trying to help him to uh, really just clean up. He, he, he gave up Diet Coke, which Kevin, if anybody knows Kevin Metcalf, he drinks about six Diet Cokes a day. So for him to give that up, that means that he's really serious about this record and discipline. He's cut out uh, sugars and different, uh, different things that really don't help your nutrition and really focused on consuming more protein and uh, different types of uh, supplements for, uh, to get his iron levels up and his calcium levels up and magnesium so he doesn't cramp. Uh, he's using Tropical Edge, which is a, uh, a lotion that goes on the legs that uh, uh, actually helps with prevent cramping, so that's, that's really good as well. But we've been really impressed with the health and the support that Goo Energy Labs has provided in this attempt. And it looks like uh, Dan's telling me that we're at 49 kilometers an hour at uh, five minutes in. So clearly Kevin's, Kevin's up there. He's, he's really going fast. Uh, and I'm hoping, you know, in Tesla, we estimate that Kevin can almost, that we're, we're hoping that he actually gets up into the 50 range uh, if everything goes according to plan. But, but we'll see. I mean, it, it gets late in the event, and that's, uh, that's what this is all about. The hour record is one of the, the hardest disciplines in all of cycling because of the fact that it requires a maximum effort for one hour of sustained energy and power. Um, Kevin's worked on his aerodynamics. He's got um, uh, every aspect of his aerodynamics has been scrutinized. Uh, he's got a special set of wheels on. Uh, he's running dual discs, so front and rear disc wheel. And uh, he's got the latest BMC time machine uh, frame set from BMC. Thank you for the support, BMC bicycles. And that's a big aerodynamic advantage because the tubes are flared. They're like a uh, like a helicopter wing, essentially, to cut through the air and provide the maximum aerodynamics and the lowest uh, resistance. And then on top of that, we had the luxury of having uh, Pearl Izumi work with us to design a special custom-made skin suit for both Kevin and Dan Bryan. And these skin suits are made of a material that has been measured as the lowest aerodynamic drag of all the materials out there for cycling. And uh, so we're taking full advantage of that. Every little piece helps. Kevin's even got some socks that you can see are incredibly aerodynamic. Um, they're white, so they're kind of not a fashion. You know, he's, he's hit the fashion faux pas with them, but we'll give him a, a, a mulligan on that because they're so aerodynamic. As Kevin's going around now, um, we're looking at about seven minutes in. Yeah, he's uh, almost eight minutes in now with his next lap. Uh, he's, he's first was saying that Kevin's just dropping now. He's got a little business. Kevin's face is picking up and right now, but Kevin uh, tells us that he's up in about 29.3 kilometers per hour. And he's 22 seconds ahead of the pace he would need to be going at uh, to break the existing record. So he's quite a bit ahead of the existing record. His start lap is slower than the running laps he does after that. So he spends up the whole rest of the hour making up for time lost. A machine that actually calculates the differential of the start lap. And as you say, uh, he's building his speed the whole way. So based on what you're seeing, with him starting out five minutes at 49 kilometers an hour, now he's up to 49.3. How do you feel he's doing right now? I think he's doing great. Um, you know, if I were having electronic time, I would make it more interesting. I would make it more interesting. I would make it more broadcast. You might also be watching on uh, YouTube. But uh, he's had pretty even laps, and they're pretty fast. Um, I don't know exactly where it's going to pick him up, but uh, right now it's uh, well more than 40 minutes. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, and that's our goal. I mean, 
the world record for Kevin again is 47.773. So uh, if he keeps this pace up, if he can sustain this and build upon this, he'll not only get the world hour record, but he'll blow it away. I mean, he'll set something that uh, is uh, quite out there, a bar that's really high for his age group. And uh, we're, we're really holding our breath and crossing our fingers, making sure that we can do it. But this takes, this takes years of practice. I mean, Kevin's been around for so long. He's a legend in the sport. I mean, he's a 16 time national champion and in pretty much all disciplines. I mean, he's won the time trial, he's won the road race, he's won the hill climb, multiple championships on the track. Uh, so if anybody knows pacing, I mean, Kevin's like the professor. He is so meticulous in his preparation and understanding his gears and uh, understanding his training, his wattage, almost to the point of insanity, I would say. I mean, he's, he's one of those guys that just, uh, you know, he's so meticulous about everything. So, um, you know, I, have, have you seen a guy go this fast, Rob, that is in this age group? I mean, clearly, this will be a world record, so. No, I'm not. You know, this is, uh, there, uh, I think uh, Kevin uh, is, is going very fast. There was a guy who set a French national record, so, well, and, 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 and he was able to kiss a day. I did watch Thomas Decker uh, do a UCI hour at Tennis Bell in person, uh, and he was going a little bit faster than Kevin, um, but uh, he didn't do the record, which I think hopefully will be different than Kevin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Kevin, you know, it, it, it's interesting because when we've been doing the lead up, I mean, we, we talked a little bit about this this morning when Dan Bright was doing his attempt. We started this project back in November and with the help of Crew Energy Labs and Creative Blue and BMC Bicycles and uh, Pearl Izumi and everybody that's been involved, Bell Helmets, um, just the preparation that has gone into this has is, is been amazing. I mean, it's a very different discipline than what we do on the road every year. Uh, we're teammates, of course, on Pete's Coffee Racing Team. And uh, so right now, Kevin's racing for USA and uh, our sponsors, Blue Energy Labs, Creative Blue, and BMC and all of those. Um, and then he's going to go down to the World, uh, world Championships in LA as well on the track. Uh, to hopefully get a world championship uh, title after this. But this has been his primary focus for the whole year and something that Kevin has, has wanted for a long, long time. So for him to have the opportunity and for us to have the opportunity to be part of it, it's just been, a, I think, a special occasion. And so we're really looking at uh, history being made here as Kevin, Kevin's really going along well at this point in time. So who's doing the timing for Kevin? Who's showing him his time? That's Dan Bryant. So Dan Bryant was uh, doing the attempt this morning, and of uh, course, wow. So let's take a look. There's Dan Bryant right there. And give us a thumbs up. All right. So Kevin just did an 18-second lap, so he's, he's well on pace. Uh, but Dan Bryant, it, it's so great to be working with the world time trial champion Dan Bryant and Kevin together. These guys have formed a partnership in uh, kind of brothers in arms, if you will. Uh, in this whole initiative for the world hour record and they uh, really complement each other and have pushed each other to a different level. I mean, you're seeing Kevin ride at a pace that, uh, I mean, I don't think he rode this fast when in 1992 when we were teammates. So, I mean, he is really laying it out there right now and uh, really exciting. Yeah, one thing that's uh, I think a nice thing to do is to And for all of you out there that are cyclists or aspiring cyclists, if you want to understand what it's like to go 30 miles an hour, uh, you can go out on your bike and go on a road, just a flat road, and start doing a sprint. Just wind it up and see, see how long it takes you to get up to 30 miles an hour and then try to hold 30 miles an hour. Well, Kevin is holding 30 miles an hour and this is an hour long event. So he is uh, on pace, as, as, as Rob mentioned, 
Um, to be over 49 kilometers an hour is essentially the pace that he's on right now. So one thing about the wheels and the tires that Kevin's using on this track here in Aguas Calientes, it's a wood track, it's a surface, it's incredibly smooth. Uh, we're at altitude, we're at 6,200 feet, I believe, is that right, Rob? Mm -hmm. So we're at 6,200 feet. We're trying to do this at a temperature that uh, is warm enough where there's lower resistance, so riders go faster. And um, But the, the, the pressure in Kevin's tires, we pumped up his tires to 200 PSI, which, uh, you know, if you're on the road with 200 PSI, uh, you know, it'll practically give you fractures in your bones trying to hold onto the bike. Uh, but fortunately, this track is just smooth as butter. I mean, the, the, the wood here is just incredibly smooth, really fast. Uh, one of the fastest tracks, if not the fastest track in the world. And uh, that's why we, we chose this track. So now we're looking at, wow, Kevin is at 15 minutes. Kevin is up to 49.5 kilometers an hour. That's amazing. So he's really building on that. Rob, what do you think of that? I mean, he's... Uh, I think it's possible that Kevin's on something back. We'll find out as we watch the rest of this hour in suspense. Uh, it'll either become very difficult or maybe <laughs> or, or maybe uh, it seems to become easier. But it's, uh, it's an impressive case already. It's just it's, it's a stunning, stunning extension of the record. Yeah, and you've, you've seen this a lot too, Rob, right? I mean, you've seen, uh, you obviously, you're the support crew for Molly, and uh, she got a world record. And so, uh, tell us about that. Tell us what you know, your experience with being involved with the support. I mean, you can tell just by looking at Kevin that he's going fast. Well, I can tell he's going fast. What I would say, so Molly did uh, set a new uh, Masters uh, world record in the rate group in 40 to 24 last night. Um, uh, just over 47k, 47 k uh, uh, And what I can say is that uh, it's, it's, it's easier when you're down on the velodrome giving them the time, like <laughs> Dan is, to know how they're doing because you really, you actually have a connection with the rider when you're down there giving them the time, even if they're not quite. Uh, <laughs> and uh, you can tell what the weaving is doing uh, and how the face looks, what sort of expressions they're making. So Dan probably knows more than us what Kevin looks like right now. Uh, but looking from up here, he looks awfully comfortable. Yeah, and uh, that's a great point. I mean, uh, Kevin looks so smooth right now. I mean, um, I've had the luxury to uh, been teammates and, and ride with Kevin for years, and I can tell you his position just looks really, really dialed right now. I mean, he's he's super aerodynamic. Um, his cadence is about uh, probably about 108 to 110 RPMs. He's holding the black line really well and just uh, keeping a, a flat back, which is what you want. You're not uh, causing a, 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 you know, minimizing the aerodynamic drag. And he's just holding that position, elbows tucked in, head down, uh, really great line. So we're liking what we see here. And um, I'm, I'm optimistic that he's gonna be able to, to continue this pace. And, uh, you know, time will tell. I mean, the last 15 minutes, that's where this is all going to uh, be shown, right? Yeah, I think the very difficult part, the part I've seen the difficult for riders before is when they pass 30 minutes. Because um, they've really reached a point where now it's a threshold effort, good and solid. Um, and also they have 30 minutes left, so they have to think about those next 20 minutes of that ride. It's hard to think about those 20 minutes uh, and see them as short. Uh, you can think about, oh, when I get to the last 10 minutes, I can do anything. But when there's 30 minutes left, it can be stiff too. But yes, physically, the last 15 minutes are uh, definitely hard. Yeah. Yeah, and his pace again. I mean, Kevin's Kevin's pace right now. He's on uh, 49.5 kilometers an hour and improving. Uh, so he's going faster and faster as we're going, and he's on. Uh, a gear, uh, his front chamber is a 52 tooth, his rear pod is a 13 tooth, and he is just, uh, you know, RPMs right around, right around 110 RPMs is what he's doing right now, so he is really on it. 
So he is uh, up on the hour record, as we said, he's, he's 49.5 kilometers an hour average speed at this point in time. And his record, again, Jim McMurray from New Zealand holds the current hour record for 55 to 59 age group. And that record is 47.773. And Kevin is well above that. So uh, he is looking to crush this record. We just have to make sure uh, nothing catastrophic happens. But I, I feel like Kevin is really just in the, in the zone right now. One of the things that Kevin does is just so meticulous. He, he rides the rollers, or the, the trainers, excuse me, and he does these 20 minute efforts. And uh, he is just, he just does these over and over again uh, through training. And he does like 79 or 80 of them leading up to the season, just working on his threshold power. And those give him this, this is base power. And he's still, you can see, he's 20 minutes in, 49.5 kilometers per hour, so he is he's still holding that speed and increasing on it, which is fantastic. So, uh, pretty excited about this for, for Kevin and all the people watching, and certainly all of our sponsors uh, that have put a huge effort and support into this effort. I know Kevin, his discipline and his training uh, has been just outstanding. And uh, also, the results that Kevin's been getting, I mean, when you go out ride with him, it's so hard to stay with him. He just, uh, it's like he's on another level this time. So uh, he is just really motivated to do this. Uh, Rob, what kind of motivation does it take? I mean, you've seen this in a lot of elite athletes. You've seen a lot of people try to break the hour record. It takes a special breed of person, physically and uh, mentally, to do this, right? Yeah, I think it does. It's, uh, it's a, uh it's grueling in a way that I think a road time trial is. Having not written one myself, I'm speaking from, from the athletes <laughs> I watch, but um, it's hard on your body physically because um, there's two things that happen in the road time trial on the track. One of those things is every time you go through a corner, um, you get G forces pushing you down right. into the track, right. pushing you down onto your arrow bars. Um, when you're on arrow bars, that's actually a little easier than if you were in road bars because your arm sort of hooks it. Nevertheless, I think models of the person now that are on the track and felt like uh, she broke them on the wrong. So I imagine those two forces. The other thing that happens that most people don't know or think about is that uh, your cadence varies through each lap quite a bit. Uh, so when you look at the corner, this is your body rather less distance uh, than your wheels uh, because you're leaning in. Uh, and when that happens, your speed goes up naturally, and your cadence goes up naturally by like three or four or five RPMs if the speeds the cadence is heavy as well. Um, and that is um, physically demanding. Uh, fluctuating your cadence uh, 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 four, twice uh, every 20 seconds or every 19 seconds is not as easy as you might think. Right. Um, and so there's actually more, ironically, you think in the road time trial, there's more sort of variation in the, in the road time. Yeah, and it, you bring up a good point because these turns, so, so you're getting all of those G-forces when you're coming into these turns, but this is a 250 meter track, so it's a shorter track than things like, uh, let's say, San Jose, Hellier Velodrome, where, where Kevin has done some uh, training out there, and so essentially, to do the time that Kevin is looking to do, he's going to do about 200 laps, that means he's going around these corners 400 times. I mean, that's, uh, that's significant. And to hold himself those G-forces and hold himself in the, the arrow position, uh, I mean, that, that just, as you say, it's just so physically demanding. Yes, it is. It's uh, 20, we're, we're 23, 24 minutes in, and, and uh, you know, one, one thing we can focus on is Kevin's average speed. Another thing is just looking at where he stands relative to the existing record. And on, on the schedule, he happened to be able to see the record. He's now 56 seconds ahead. Yeah. Um, so, uh, in fact, my uh, my visual that you might see if you're watching this on YouTube as well is going to start failing us soon because it does not account for situations where you are more than a minute ahead. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> right. 
uh, you start picking there's only one second ahead and in fact he's a minute in the second. Right, okay, so we'll have to watch that. So just just so everybody's aware, the, the world hour record for Kevin's age group uh, for 55 to 59 age is held by Jim McMurray from New Zealand at 47.773 kilometers. Kevin is currently pacing at 49.5 kilometers, and as Rob mentioned, that puts him at nearly a minute ahead, so about 56 seconds ahead of world record pace. And uh, certainly, Kevin Kevin's bar, he wants to hit 50 kilometers. I think that's, uh, you know, I think he's going to be somewhere in this 49, 49 plus range, uh, but he's well ahead of world record pace right now, and we're getting close to halfway into this effort. He's 25 minutes in. So 25 minutes in, uh, he's still at 49.5 kilometers an hour. So he is holding straight, just like a true metronome. And we, a uh, little anecdote story here, when we were training doing some testing in Hellier on the velodrome, Kevin gave me a spreadsheet before, the, uh, before his test. And he did a full hour legitimately. And uh, Dan Martin, Nick Theobald and I uh, were trying to have a beer for every lap that uh, Kevin did, and we kind of failed at that. But uh, Kevin hit just about every single lap spot on to what he thought he was going to hit, and essentially at the end he came up two seconds quicker than what he estimated he would do. So this is a man that knows his pacing, he knows how to ride at a steady state effort and at high water. So he is just lighting it up right now. One thing that's really worked out well for Kevin is so far is the conditions to it. Usually the temperature in this velodrome drops. And you know, Kevin wanted to start his hour around 80 degrees and figuring that um, you know, there was no way to avoid the fact, thinking that 80 was about the ideal temperature, um, but there was no way to avoid the fact that uh, the temperature was going to decrease. And what happens when the temperature decreases in this velodrome and everywhere is that the air pressure increases. And as the air pressure increases, it becomes harder for a rider to maintain their speed. Um, and uh, what has happened so far in the Texas hour is that the temperature has basically stayed up. Um, it's right now 79.2 where we sit, oh, and it was basically that temperature when he started. So um, the atmospheric conditions have really been working out well for him. Again, for you, uh, for you, uh, the density of the air where we're sitting, which is a little above where Kevin's riding, uh, and so it's a little higher up here, a little lower up here, uh, but it's 0. 0.943 kilograms per meter uh, uh, cube. Uh, and that's, uh, that's, that's a good part of the temperature. Uh, but in August, I look at it's mainly due to the fact that we're at 6,200 feet. And the air gets thinner up here, which makes it hard for Kevin, harder for Kevin to produce power. But that uh, loss in power is uh, many people who are more than compensated for by the reduction in air conditions. The air gets in the air resistance when you're uh, going, uh, as Kevin is right now, more than 30 and a half miles per hour. Yeah, that's a great, uh, uh, you know, Rob, you mentioned that it, it, you know, being meticulous about the air pressure and the temperature and finding the right time. For, for all you out there that are, that are watching us right now live with Kevin Metcalf doing the hour record, uh, you'll know that we delayed the start a little bit. And that was, as Rob explained, we were really waiting to make sure that not only the temperature, but the air pressure was at the exact right amount uh, to maximize the opportunity for Kevin. Uh, there's so much preparation in this. So uh, those little pieces to be meticulous about are what adds up to a big piece, which is ultimately getting the world record. And that's what Kevin's going for. So he is certainly on pace right now um, and exceeding the pace at 49.5 kilometers per hour, which is just unfathomable for a guy Kevin's age uh, for the 55 to 59 age group. He is just really flying. He's uh, about a minute ahead of world record pace. The world record again currently is 47.773 by Jim McMurray, and Kevin is well above that, averaging 49.5 kilometers per hour. So he is moving right now. We've got Dan Bryant there. You can see right the, the heart, the UC. UCI officials are also managing the time. 
Uh, I'll get back to Kevin here as well. But uh, essentially, we've got a whole support crew that are really uh, helping us out. I'm gonna try to get a little closer on Kevin. I know we wanna, we wanna see his face. It's hard for me, I'm uh, trying to hold the camera and not doing a very good job. I, I'm shaking around here, but uh, it's hard to hold the camera for an hour straight. <laughs> I haven't done it this morning, not used to that, but let's see if we can get a close up of it. The other person helping Kevin is Dean Phillips, and Dean himself is an incredible cyclist, world champion, multiple times on the track, and three K pursuit, uh, including, I think, the reigning world champion. And today, uh, Dean took uh, a couple of seconds now uh, three K pursuit. So he's 30 minutes in. 49.5 kilometers, and there's Dean right there. Uh, Dean's helping us out with the boards for Kevin. It's uh, it's really nice, it's like a fraternity. I mean, all these people are out here uh, supporting each other, trying to go after world records. I mean, these are, these are lifetime achievements for these riders. And, uh, Kevin's a 16-time national champion, but to get an hour record, I mean, we've talked with Kevin about this quite a bit, and, um, you know, what it would mean to him to get an hour record and a world record beyond just all of his national titles. And this is an important thing. I mean, uh, you know, he's done this so many times and we were asking him what it's like getting ready before the event. Is this just like another big event for you? And, and there's no doubt he had some nerves and was, uh, uh, he's amped up for this. I mean, listening to his hair metal and uh, rock music and on the trainer, you, you could tell he was ready to eat some nails. So he's he's out there uh, on a pace to, to set the world record at this point in time. Uh, again, his nutrition, um, you know, we, we vowed to give Kevin a couple beers uh, if he breaks the record, but uh, Roxanne at Goo Energy Labs has been so helpful with Kevin's diet and his nutrition, just making sure that he's eating right. Um, we've done testing up in uh, UC Davis, the physiological testing to make sure that uh, they're performing at the best. And of course, Kevin's been managing his, his, uh, his weight and everything, so he's, he's put everything into this, and so it's a big, big goal for the year. Also, like I said, sometimes it's just middle. And my guess is uh, uh, he's, he's, he's facing the challenge that everyone faces in the alley, which is it's just an intensely difficult thing to have to do. You know, holy, uh, while you're doing it, obviously, in a way that, um, as, as, as Molly was saying yesterday, for there were periods of her life last night where she was, she felt like she was in a trance, she said, and, uh, you know, worried that she would uh, ride up the track. Uh, and he's just he's continuing to just pound a solid pace uh, with that high cadence. And, you know, one thing that's interesting is, is choosing cadence for an hour record. Um, Kevin is, is turning the cadence into something. That's a little higher than the average hour record breaker. The average hour record breaker chooses a cadence of much more like uh, 100 RPMs. Um, and, uh, but, but for example, some people are exceptions. Uh, when Molly wrote about the same thing, she was driving, uh, and here, bigger than when Kevin was driving, but she wasn't hoping to go nearly as far as Kevin's going to go. Uh, and uh, so she was riding in a 56 12. Uh, and her cadence was more like 80. Wow, 80. Uh, yeah, that's a big difference. So, Rob, I just, uh, when you talked about the mental aspect as well as physical, we just saw a, a pretty crucial moment. Right down there, you can see on the apron, uh, looks like Kevin hit one of the sponges. Uh, maybe a momentary lapse of concentration, um, but that looked like he nearly went down on that. So, uh, I'm glad he's still up in time. We lost a little time on that lap, but he did hit one of the, the apron sponges. Um, clearly, he was trying to keep his line down on the black line. Uh, just went in a little bit tight, but we're glad that he's still upright. I mean, that's the kind of thing, uh, Rob, you, you mentioned that it's just as much mental as physical, and the Molly was almost in a trance at this point, 
and uh, Kevin certainly uh, his eyes are focused on that black line and trying to hold it there but just had a momentary lapse of public concentration that could be catastrophic I mean that could end his whole whole night and so glad that he's still up but but tell me a little bit more about that that concentration that it requires well it certainly requires a lot of concentration and avoiding the sponges is one thing but what kevin just did by hitting one of those sponges he probably demonstrated that he's trying to all the next day as well as he can stay uh you know one of the other things i would have to rely on the last night was i think maybe it was the first hour she's done where she didn't hit a sponge and that probably mm -hmm. means that her line wasn't quite as tight as it could have been. Uh, and so, um, you know, if you're concentrating on that, you don't have to look at They don't really stop you know, slowing down a little bit. But they're, they're used because they're safe, and they're used to keep you from shortcutting the track. If you look at the track, uh, for those of you who don't know tracks, you'll see that the line Kevin's often trying to ride is the lowest black And uh, that black line is where the track is measured. So this track is, is just probably a centimeter or two longer than 250 meters when measured around that black line. Um, and uh, the rider actually now can ride below that black line actually uh, give credit for more distance than they actually rode because a rider is, 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 is allowed to ride down between the black line and the blue band. Uh, and, um, and when they do that, they're going to set the sort of as long as you have, and they limit how far that you ride. Yeah. Um, and they prevent the rider from, from uh, basically taking a shortcut each lap. Uh, uh, they can take a little shortcut, that's allowed. But a shortcut bigger than those sponges uh, is not allowed. Yeah. So again, uh, for going down on the apron of what they call the light blue area of the track, uh, there's no penalty unless you go inside of that. The sponges, as, as Rob was mentioning, are there to prevent you from going down there. So uh, the other piece is it's not banked down there as, as much, and so around the corners it's just not, not as fast. I mean, you definitely don't want to go there. You want to cut it, as Rob was saying, as tight as possible without going on those sponges, essentially. And that's what Kevin's been doing. I mean, his line, I really like the way he's been holding that line and he might have uh, freaked him out a little bit getting that sponge, I think, because uh, he did look, it, it looked uh, um, pretty, <laughs> pretty close from here uh, and I heard it. So uh, we'll, we'll have to talk to him about that afterwards, about hitting that sponge, but um, he's on track now. And, uh, he just passed 35 minutes in, and he's still at 49.5 kilometers an hour, so he's well on pace to break the world hour record of 47.773 kilometers. And uh, looks like he's trying to get through that period in the, in the event where he's going through that transit, as Rob mentioned, um, and just get through that and get to the final 15 minutes, which is really when they have to dig deep uh, that's the pain part of this event. I, mean, uh, I know that Kevin has talked about that. It's just getting to that last 15 minutes and being able to concentrate and really put the power and use the fitness. Uh-oh, Kevin just hit another one there going into the turn. Uh, he just came out, so he's going to lose a little more time. Clearly, his, uh, his concentration, he is putting maximum effort in right now. And uh, we just got to make sure that he, he settled down and stays on it without hitting those sponges. That's the second one that he's hit. So again, there's no time penalty for hitting a sponge, but it does certainly slow you down. And worst case scenario, can throw your balance off and you end up hitting the ground. And that happens and it's pretty much game over for the attempt. So we don't want that to happen. We want to make sure that Kevin is, uh, we have the official here resetting the sponge to keep Kevin from going down there on the apron. But uh, we want him to stay at the black line, but we don't want him hitting sponges and having the risk of uh, losing the record over something like that. So uh, he's doing a great job, though, and his pace, I mean, he is a metronome. I mean, uh, he is averaging 49.5 kilometers per hour, and he is holding steady again. The first lap, he gets a seven, what is it, Rob, a seven and a half second differential is what we calculate? Or? Yeah, he did it a little faster than that, but, he, 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 but yes, we, we, we assumed that it was between about seven and a half seconds more time to do the first lap, 
than to do the lap subsequent to that. And he's now more than made up that difference on the record. The record uh, Evans now eating three seconds ahead of the record. Uh, so he's far ahead of the record. When you translate 83 seconds into laps around uh, the track, that means he's, he's currently, and of course gaining every lap on top of this, but he's currently uh, more than 750 meters ahead of the track. If he, if he was on the track with the person who currently holds the record, Kevin would have lapped that three. person three times. Yeah. Uh, so that's one way to think about that, about how fast he's going. Um, and it's not that the person who held the record before was in this lap. Uh, riding more than 47 k uh, is a difficult thing to do. Uh, but um, yeah, he's um, he's really putting in an excellent ride here. Yeah, Kevin's clicking off those 18. He's in the mid 18.5 second laps and even lower. And, uh, let's see where we're at. Okay, so he's dropped down a little bit to. Uh, 49.4 kilometers, he's 40 minutes in, so he's got 20 minutes to go. So he's getting into the crunch time of this uh, this effort here. And I think that a uh, little bit loss of speed can be attributed to hitting the two sponges on the apron um, in the, the laps earlier. Uh, he hit he hit two sponges again within within about five laps or ten laps of each other, and that can certainly cause a little bit of uh, cost a little bit of time and a little bit of speed. But uh, looks like he's back up to speed. He's focused. Um, he's got about 20 minutes left, just a little over 20 minutes left in this effort. Um, actually, just under 20 minutes looks like, and uh, he's well on pace to break the record. As Rob had mentioned, he's, uh, you know, if another rider was on the track, he would have lapped him three times already uh, on the previous record, 47.773 kilometers. So Kevin is flying right now. I want to talk a little bit about the bike that Kevin's using. He's riding a DMC Time Machine bike, and uh, we are really happy that DMC provided us these bikes for this effort both Kevin and Dan Bryant. Uh, they are the most aerodynamic bike that DMC has, and uh, uh, they account to help for some great time advantage on the track. Uh, they help with uh, stabilizing the front end of the bike while uh, it's at speed, and uh, certainly the aerodynamic drag is much lower than most of the, uh, most of the uh, other frames out there. Looks like we just have Greg Daniel join. Uh, our buddy from Pete's, Pete's Coffee Racing Team hung out with Greg Daniel when he won the U.S. Pro Championships um, in North Carolina, and he was uh, he was one of our. Uh, it was it was fun having him at the same at the same hotel as us, and the wife for Trek Segafredo. So welcome, Greg. We're watching Kevin Metcalf, um, 55 to 59 years old, um, setting the world hour record here in. Aguas Calientes, Mexico, and Kevin is just flying. He is 49.4 uh, kilometers per hour, and uh, he is, is just moving. We're coming into the, the later stages. We're almost at 15 minutes to go, and that's really when we're going to find out if, if Kevin's going to make this hour record. We have, we have looked at, uh, he talked about 49.5 kilometers is what he wanted to do. He didn't just want to break the record, he wanted to shatter the record. And it's it's just awesome to see. I mean, again, Kevin is like a, a, an onboard computer. He uh, he knows his pacing, he knows his body, he knows how to go at the speed, he knows what he's capable of, and he's doing it right here, right now. Uh, you're watching it live uh, here in Aguas Calientes, Mexico. Uh, the, the the sort of the end of the effort, right at the end of the day, I'm going to take over and take some of that thing away. But um, I think that doesn't happen as much as you would hope sometimes. Uh, and, you know, one thing to remember is, in 15 minutes, you say, well, there's 15 minutes to go, but that's a quarter of the hour yeah. that's left. It's not like you are really, you know, I think it's a quarter of the hour that's left. You've got 15 minutes left. But it's, it's a long way to go. And, um, you know, I think, He's going to be feeling it in those 15 minutes. Um, and I uh, think there's really no question about that. Uh, and you can see he's starting to have a little more difficulty with his 
yeah. shoots his focus. But I think that just because he's, he's deep in the effort and he's focused on putting out the power, uh, and um, that sort of can, can lead you to, um, to be inefficient in your, in your line a little bit. Um, and, uh, 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 yeah, yeah, but he's he's keeping a spectacular pace, so it's really quite a lot. Yeah, I know Kevin really well with his his riding style. He is so smooth. We have all kinds of inappropriate names for how smooth he is, actually. But he is riding right now at 49.4 kilometers an hour, and he's getting into the last bit of this. But I can tell you, he is. Looking a little bit ragged, he's trying to hold it together, and uh, but he's still, as as Rob mentioned, he is still flying. I mean, he is, he's going fast. He's still at 49.4 kilometers per hour. Uh, his line is not quite as smooth as it was in the beginning, but he's he's got less than 15 minutes to go, and it's looking really good for Kevin right now. So he's going to pull a minute and a half up on what we were expecting. Uh, on, 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 on beating the current world record. Uh, so just to put that in, in perspective, a minute and a half is a, is a, is a long way uh, on the track. Uh, it's more than a long way to be expected. Where the current record will be. Yeah, so and again, for those of you just joining us, we're watching Kevin Metcalf. Uh, with his attempt at the world power record in Aguas Calientes, Mexico, and the current world record is 47.773 kilometers, and that is set by Jim McMurray from New Zealand, and Kevin is well above that, so he is, uh, he's crushing it right now. He's at 49.4 kilometers an hour, and if he can hold this for the next, well, he's got, what does he have, about 11, 12 minutes left? No, it's no more than that. No more than uh, that? Yeah, 13 and a half. 13 and a half. So he, he's so. still got some work to do. Yeah. It's no no gimme here. Oh, he went really low well on the apron there. You can see he's... Uh, yeah, and that was one that I noticed. This one yeah. has been better the last two laps. Uh, and he, uh, he had tightened it up and, and become more fluid in his riding. Uh, and, um, but that time he did with that spawn. So. Yeah, I think when he, he hits the sponge, he gets a little bit tentative and goes above it for a few laps. He's trying to get his mindset again and go back in there, but he just, uh, yeah, he just hit another sponge. So that's the third sponge that he's hit. Now, now Rob, tell me, you, you said that Molly is, he hit sponges, and that's kind of par for the course in these hour record attempts, but hitting three sponges in an attempt, is that, uh, have you seen that before? Oh, sir. Okay. Uh, I, I would say, you know, there's two ways you hit sponges, and uh, one is you're just zipping down right by them and you're knocking with your pedal or something, and the other is you actually run into them. Uh, so far, Kevin, run into them. So, yeah. uh, that's, I, I tell you what, I mean, you know, don't think about hitting those sponges in the first place, um, and I think it probably is a little bit of a um, And uh, what it does, I think, more than cost you time on that lap is do exactly what you said, Chris, which is give you to be more cautious on subsequent laps in a way that um, slows you down it's because you start making a line that's a little bit more than the because you don't want to hit it. Um, and uh, I think that's, that's slowed Kevin down a little bit. One thing to note is we're, we're easing up here on the uh, 40K mark. So currently Kevin's about to hit 39,750 when we start this lap, stop this lap. We get that at like 38.3. Um, and so that means uh, Kevin's going to hit uh, 40K here in just a, a few seconds. He's, he's rolling around the track getting to the 40K point. Um, and let's see what he gets it in here. Boom. 40K and 48 to 42. Wow. So he just broke his 40K record. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So for those yeah. of you who, who are, are cyclists, you know that <laughs> a standard, a standard different distance, it's one that, um, that, uh, that, for example, USA Cycling keeps a record in is the 40K. Kevin pulled the 40K record. He was only a three day back in the age of the He said that when he was uh, a couple years ago, three or four years ago, when he was in that younger age group. He pulled both of those 40K records. And on this track here in August Calientes, uh, uh, despite the um, cadence fluctuations in the G forces, he just exceeded both of those 40K records. Yeah. Uh, 
And, uh, you know, uh, one thing to uh, say about the 40 case Kevin's done is that he's done them in Northern California, his fastest ones, uh, also at altitude, like this fellow from August Calientes. Uh, and um, that's one way I think that Kevin knew that uh, he could do this, and that this would be a good place to do it. And he handled out the well, and was ready to come here and go fast. Yeah, that's right. So uh, this is Rob Van Halley, and this is Chris Ott. Coming to you live from Aguas Calientes, Mexico. We're watching uh, Kevin Metcalf go for the world hour record. And as Rob just mentioned, Kevin just just flew past 40 kilometers uh, in, in a time of 48:48. Is that is that right? Is that about? I think that's right. Four kilometers per hour for an hour is just unbelievable. He is just really putting it down. He is so motivated. I think that hitting those uh, those sponges. He's hit three of them. The first one that he hit, Rob, I think that kind of threw him off a little bit. I think that scared him. I saw his front wheel go out a little bit and he held on to it. We're really happy to, uh, he's still moving, but he, his mindset has got to be just, he's in pain right now. It's at the end of the effort. He's got, um, looks like another 10 minutes left, and uh, but he, he is rolling. You can see right out there when we see Kevin come by the start finish line, he's standing there, uh, looking over to the shape of his and he set a world hour record. Um, not only, of course, is uh, anti-doping required, but we're also required to have a UCI International Commissar to oversee the events. Uh, and uh, Randy's overseeing a number of events. Randy was also a official as an international commissar. This year he was an official in the Giro. We saw him peeking his head out of the top of a red car that rides behind the race right. in the Giro. Uh, and he's also the new uh, technical director of USA Cycling. So we're really happy that he came here to uh, uh, help us uh, officiating those events uh, and making an official UCI uh, our uh, Masters Technical Records. Uh, yeah, and that, I, I think the other thing, Rob, is, is we got to meet with the Mexican Cycling Federation and just the hospitality uh, that we've received here in Mexico for this attempt has just been phenomenal. I mean, uh, we've really felt at home and the support and the encouragement that they've given us along the way, all the way from you know the transport from the airport with the bikes, uh, the use of the velodrome, like everything involved has it, just been really helpful. And, and a shout out to all of our sponsors that have made this possible. I know that uh, you know Goo Energy Labs has helped with the diet, nutrition, and the physiological testing for Kevin and Dan Bryan. Uh, you know, we've got Trilogy that has helped with the skin suit to get the most aerodynamic skin suit possible. BMC Bicycles uh, giving the most aerodynamic equipment available. Creative Blue for helping with the story and uh, you know following our record process. We have Die Endurance with Mike Sayers who has helped Dan Bryan uh, with some of his strength training. Just, I mean, the, the list goes on. Rob, yourself with the timing and Craig Huffman with photography. There's so many people that have made this possible and uh, without all the support of all those people, uh, this just wouldn't be possible. And then of course it takes Kevin Metcalf, the super athlete, and uh, kind of the uh, you know, a legend in the sport, if you will. I mean, he's been in this for decades, and he's just laying out some unbelievable times out there, and he's on a 49.4 kilometer per hour pace. Um, the team should be just about wrapping up here in, uh, let's see, we've got, he's got, he's got about six minutes left at this point. When he crosses this next lap, he's going to have a slightly more than six minutes left. So six minutes for Kevin. You know, he does these Diablo rides every week and he's going up, up and down multiple times. So six minutes, I know in his head he's thinking, you know, I just have six minutes left and then I'm a world record holder. So he is really, I think, just his mental focus right now, I think he's just digging in. And Rob, I, I can't see him slowing down. I mean, he is still holding the same pace from the beginning. Uh, his line is fluctuating clearly as we talked about when he hit the sponges, but he's holding his line well. His cadence is still up there at uh, 107 to 109 RPMs, uh, just spinning that gear over. He's holding his aerodynamic position. Do you see any flaws in the way, guys? No, I think, uh, I think we, uh, 
probably once it gets here with five minutes to go, you might hear some loud cheering into the uh, absolutely into the uh, from us into the into the computer. But um, I think uh, you see the light at the end of the tunnel here, and it's ready to move the effort to keep us on with a nice pace. He's almost he's almost 100 seconds uh, ahead of a minute and 40 seconds ahead of the current. Uh, record. So at this point, uh, Kevin has some latitude. Come on, Kevin! So I can tell you it's going to be Fiesta time and Ottawa's Calientes tonight. Kevin's got five more minutes to go. He is over the, the world hour record pace. And uh, again, the, uh, the world hour record for the 55 to 59 is 47.773 kilometers an hour. Uh, from Jim McMurray in New Zealand, and Kevin is well above that. He is just crushing it. He is uh, 49 point, looks like he's dropped a little bit, 49.2 kilometers. I think getting those sponges cost him a little bit, but it, it doesn't even matter. He is crushing it right now. Uh, looks like he's got, uh, wow, he's got about four minutes, just over four minutes to go. And, um, you know, we'll be looking at the new world record. Go, Kevin! Yeah, sounds good. We obviously are both, uh, I don't want to tell you, Kevin, but we're here, so uh, finally, because we're friends with Kevin and we're rooting for him. Yeah, we're, I mean, we're huge we're fans here. and friends and trying to, you know, we, we've been on this road together and trying to make this happen. And it's just an awesome experience to see Kevin do this. Uh, I mean, Rob, you've seen you've seen people break records all along the way, I mean, with Molly and everybody else. But but what is this like? I mean, the significance of this. He is crushing this record. Yeah, yeah. It's rare that you see someone put uh, so much distance into uh, possible. He's been he just just around two days fast, I think. What did you say the existing record was? Forty-seven point seven seven. Ah, so one and a half days or or, or more uh, around. Yeah. I mean, he he's literally putting this out of reach uh, for a long time. I mean, unless somebody really puts in an effort to, to train and prepare and do all the things that are necessary for this type of effort. Yeah, you have to remember that Chris, world record right there. Oh, yeah, that's a good... Kevin just officially broke the world record. So he is he has shattered the record right now. Now everything that he does, he's going just above and beyond. He's trying to put this out of reach, but Kevin is your new world record holder for the hour on the track. That is unbelievable. It is going to be fiesta time here, I'm telling you. Uh, we are going to get Kevin drunk tonight. That's the that's definitely the... I don't know who else will see well, he certainly has to, uh, <laughs> he's, Kevin seems like a guy who's in control. <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll try to get him out of control tonight. But this is just fantastic. I mean, Kevin is a new world record holder. Now it's just a matter of seeing how far he goes above that record. Come on, Kevin! He's just trying to put this away. So. Uh, I think that uh, you know he's probably going to be over 49 kilometers an hour. This is just uh, this is just awesome. And he estimated that that was he was trying to shoot for 49.5. I think the possible with the sponges that he hit and the line coming out for a few laps there, getting his head back into it, but it didn't matter. I mean, he has just put this record away. Uh, it'll be really interesting to see where he ends up. Um, Let's go, Kevin! Second, How are you doing, Rob? How much time do we have left? We have uh, a minute left, basically, just less than a minute. Um, so what, what Kevin will hear is uh, just uh, in the lap uh, before he finishes, uh, hopefully, he'll hear a bell. At some point in the lap, you'll also hear a whistle. Uh, and that whistle will be the point at which he really crossed the hour. And so that's going to come up here in a, just a short period of time. My guess is it's the next lap. Uh, it's, it's 
it's going to be tough for the officials, it often is tough for the officials, because no, it won't be the next lap, it'll be the lap after that. No, it will be the next lap when he gets the ball, and then partway through that lap, we'll get a work for it. Then they're going to measure out essentially how far the, you'll, you'll hear a whistle when the hour has concluded. That's it. That's it. It's done. Kevin is done. So we so only had our whistle is right. We went a little bit further in 19, 125. Kevin, you crushed it. 49. 49.125. That's awesome. There he goes. Yeah, so Kevin is your new world record holder. 49 125 kilometers in an hour for 55 to 59 years old. That is just incredible. So we're going to go down and talk to Kevin. Uh, Woo! Good job, Kevin! So we're going to go down and say hi to Kevin and congratulate him. Yep. Uh, so we'll be back with you in a couple minutes. Let's see if we can head on down.